Um, I'm going to be talking about collective impact and from the ground up, similar to the uh, themes that were already shared today. But that made me think about um, how growing up, how uh, peace manifested through me. I, I was not a, a dancer. Who you, you did a wonderful job this morning. I was not an artist, um, so I didn't have that canvas to find peace. But I found peace in an odd uh, environment um, as a uh, football player. Um, a traditionally a very violent environment. Um, on the field, I was a much different person than I am, uh, I, than I was in my regular life. So folks that knew me were always uh, shocked that on the field I looked like this caged animal, but once I got off the field, I was at peace. And that was my, my place to um, express myself and to have this out-of-body experience um, through sport. And uh, so I just wanted to quickly reflect on my own personal uh, uh, manifestation of peace early on. Um, I have a small body frame, so I sort of needed that out-of-body uh, energy to really perform. And this is a photo of um, the team that I captained, uh, University of Pennsylvania football team to the Ivy League championship in 2000. So one of uh, my great um, accomplishments. And this guy who uh, many of you all know is Troy Polomalu, the most mild-mannered guy off the field, but on the field he's an animal. It's crazy. So um, I just wanted to do a quick introduction of, of, of a little bit about myself. Um, but uh, today I'm going to, again, talk about a couple of my experiences, and as uh, Sophia so passionately um, uh, presented earlier about the Peace Corps, I was in the Peace Corps about five years ago, and it was a life-transforming experience for me, and so today I'm going to reflect on a couple of projects um, that fall within that um, uh, umbrella or theme of collective impact and um, bridge building. Um, it's a funny story. I, my sister earlier this week said that I speak great in front of people, but that I waste a lot of words. Um, I, I think that was a, a backhand uh, slap. So I wrote some things down as to not waste words today, but I've already gone off script. Um, so anyways, uh, here we have two projects that I worked on as a Peace Corps volunteer where you serve for two years, you live in a community. The community I lived in was Bauruco in the Dominican Republic, a small, poor fishing village. For those that aren't familiar with the Dominican Republic, it's a Caribbean country um, that shares an island with Haiti. Um, so we have two, two, two projects, ceramic stoves and street beautification. Uh, the ceramic stove project is, is what I call the I project. It was a project that was imported to us from this model uh, project that was happening in Guatemala. And the Peace, Corps, uh, or the Peace Corps director in the Dominican Republic thought that the volunteers in the Dominican Republic should do the same thing. So an opportunity opened up where there was some funding um, to, to retrieve some, the materials for these ceramic stoves, which were more um, environmentally friendly. Um, and so, uh, I took advantage of that opportunity. The window was this big, and I took advantage. I wrote the proposal, and once we were awarded the money, I went to the Brigada Verde, which is a, a youth group that I formed. Um, it's the Green Brigade, so we did a lot of environmentally friendly projects. And so I went to them and said, hey, I got, we, got, we got funding for this project. We're going to get materials. What do we do? What do you guys think we should do? And so just within our group of 10 youth, we decided that we're going to use these stoves along this beautiful river, Bauruco River, where everyone cooks and bathes. And those that cook muddy up the waters with a lot of garbage and a lot of burned wood and a lot of burned rocks. And so our group of 10 youth thought this might be a great idea to build these you know, barbecue pits along the, along the river. And so we went out and built 10 of these stoves that w within the, the group of, uh, of, of our Brigada Verde. And that's uh, one example there on the left. Um, so keep that, that example in mind. Again, this was an I project. I got the funding. I wrote the, I, I wrote the proposal. I got the idea, and I got the funding, and I pushed it upon our community. Okay, project number two, street beautification. After I'd learned from this stove project, 
a, 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 a few months later, I went to the Brigada Verde and asked them what kind of beautification project they felt was needed in this small um, uh, po impoverished village. And instead of deciding within the 10 of them what to do, they went out to the community. We, ha we, we surveyed almost 100 uh, community residents to get their input as to, you know, how do you think we could beautify this, this community? And so it was the act of engagement, the communication uh, within the community um, to find out uh, what the best idea was. And so the idea that came back was planting trees along our streets to beautify the, the, the streets with, uh, with these beautiful palm trees. And so once that surveying was done, we engaged the, the community, over 100 community residents to be a part of the process. They helped me gather data to complete the grant proposal so that we can win this award this funding so that we could purchase these, these trees. And so um, the Brada Verde and, and, and dozens and dozens of residents were a part of that process. In anticipation of the trees arriving, we had a ton of community residents digging holes on, into the sidewalks, into um, dirt along these roads. And, and once the trees came, these residents put the trees in, right? They put them in, and because of that, because they felt part of the process, those trees are still up today, and that's, a, that's an example of the ones that we planted. That's actually, that's actually my green wooden house that I lived in for two years at the bottom right. But um, the, my point is, is that because the community was part of that planning process, they took ownership. There are 100 trees standing today, and they're over eight feet tall, compared to the ceramic stoves. None of those are being used today. None of the, uh, eight, I, I was told that eight have been destroyed and two are just uh, abandoned. And again, the reason why is because we didn't get the community involved. And so I, I again, I'm, I'm, I'm using these anecdotes to, to drive a point. Um, and I have one more uh, example from the Peace Corps. Um, so you see from the ground up, that's, that's what, what that ex those uh, experiences were about. Here we have the artisan school. You can't tell from where you're sitting, but I have around my neck a, a semi-precious stone called Larimar. It's a beautiful stone only found in a mine just above our village. So our community generated income through mining this material and then selling the raw material off to Santo Domingo in the capital or to European or Asian jewelers. Um, and that was great, but they weren't yielding the amount of profit that they wanted to from the stone. All these other folks were. All these middle, middle men and women uh, were. And so they came up with the idea that let's learn how to carve this stone and create jewelry. And it was at that point where they contacted the Peace Corps office and asked if they can have a Peace Corps volunteer. And so that's where I came into play. Um, they wanted someone to help them facilitate partnerships and make, you know, help this idea become a reality. And so again, it starts with that resident engagement and the planning piece of it. It was the community that mobilized itself to ask for some help. And once um, I arrived, they continued to uh, build coalitions with multi-sector partners. So um, the the, pic the second picture on the top, uh, that's my backyard, I miss that place, but that, that, that picture depicts some of the partners that were around this project. Up there we have the director of USAID, Agency for International Development. We have the mayor from our little town. We have one of the lead artisans from the community in there. We have a representative from the Secretary of Culture's office. Um, and we had the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador at the time, came and, and, and visited for that grand opening. But my point there is that there was partnerships built uh, 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 through multi-sectored arenas from local businesses to local NGOs to education institutions to government organizations and most importantly from residents, that involvement from the residents. And as a result, uh, in, the, in the right there, we call that skin in the game. That means the residents were out there building this place so that if, we, if they built it, they will come. Uh, where in a lot of cases, we build it and they will not come. So in this case, skin in the game represents just that, that they had some sweat equity into this project. And as a result, we had a, 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 um, an artisan school called Escuela Taller de Ollería. And um, the final picture there is sustainability because that picture 
is a picture of instruction happening, not in that original site. Two years after I left, the funding from the Secretary of Culture uh, went away. And because of the stakeholders that were involved with this project, we had some institutionalized stakeholders, they moved this curriculum, this program, into the newly, uh, newly constructed high school so that this uh, um, training and capacity building could continue on. And again, the sustainability behind this project only came because of the groundswell that started with the artisans, or with the miners who wanted to conceive an idea that would yield um, a better profit margins for them. Uh, so, Collective effort. I just learned how to do these little things with the PowerPoint. Um, so we go from uh, Bauruco, Dominican Republic, uh, to Huntington Beach. Um, here you have a photo of your typical scene of Huntington Beach, a very vibrant and colorful uh, uh, city, which is all part of the community that we are currently in, or the community that we work and live. Um, but today I'm going to talk about another piece of our community. About two miles away, we have a community called, a neighborhood called Oakview. Um, Oakview is a densely populated one square mile community bordered by Warner, Beach, Slater, and Gothard. So some of you are saying, hey, I know where that is. That's because it's right down the street. Um, over 32% of residents in this community uh, live below the poverty level. Now compare that to the rest of Huntington Beach, which, which is about six to seven percent. So already you begin to see that the, the disparity here between this one square mile community and the rest of Huntington Beach. 92.4% um, uh, of our residents are Latino. 96% of the students at Oakview Elementary qualify for free or reduced lunch. Um, that 92 percent, uh, if you compare that to the rest of Huntington Beach, the Huntington, rest of Huntington Beach is about 30 percent. So Oakview looks different, feels different, but it's very vibrant and rich in its own way. And I have some data here uh, that, that looks at per capita and, and, and education levels, but the bottom line is that there is a disconnect. Uh, along many measures, uh, whether it's per capita income or uh, uh, those that, that, that have a high school diploma, uh, crime rates, uh, childhood obesity, um, uh, owner-occupied versus renter-occupied. Um, if you look at these closely, you'll see that there are some disparities, but you also notice that a couple of these measures show improvement uh, from 2007 to 2011. And the way I, I, I want to describe Oakview is not through these numbers, but through the families and residents that I work with. These are the most hard-working, um, community-minded type of folks that I know. Um, and I, it, it's such a pleasure to go into work. I, I, my office is located within the Oakview Elementary School campus. You see mothers taking their kids to work, I mean, taking their kids to school and picking them up. You see neighbors hanging out with each other. So it is rich in, in, in its own way, uh, right? Because there is community and we, we all strive for these relationships, th this interconnectivity. And so within this one square mile, you can find that. Um, just to give you a little bit of historical background in Oakview, Oakview was originally Wintersburg. Um, bef uh, until the 40s, uh, the Oakview neighborhood or community was a Japanese farming community. Um, and after World War II, it became more of a white uh, uh, community and Vietnamese community. Um, and then in the, in the 60s, uh, the uh, Bracero camps were established, and that's, that became, that's when the influx of uh, Mexican immigrant farmers uh, started coming into the community. And, and it was um, in the 70s and 80s where this community really was at its lowest point. And it was during this time that residents of, of Huntington Beach called it the Slater Slums, because only along Slater could you have a window into the community. And the window that you saw, or you can still see today, are day laborers hanging out on Slater Street looking for opportunities. Um, you have 
uh, apartment buildings that don't look like they do near the beach, those condos that you see near the beach. So again, it was term coined Slater Slums, and unfortunately some people still know this neighborhood as that. We call it Oakview, and you should call it Oakview too. Um, but in the, in the mid to late 90s, a lot more service Provide, uh, service agencies entered the community, starting with the Huntington Beach Police. We had the Family Resource uh, Center um, arrive, the Oakview Library, uh, the preschool. A lot of these um, needed services started coming in. And you talk to the residents today, they see in the last 15 years, they've seen a dramatic difference because a lot of these, these, these uh, organizations, programs have come in and really helped provide the needed um, uh, uh, necessities uh, for for this community. But now we're at, a, at, a, at an interesting point because now it's time for our community to pull up their own bootstraps and change their own conditions. And they've shown that in a variety of different ways. Um, that's where the organization uh, I'm with uh, comes into play, Oakview, Oakview Renewal Partnership. Our vision is an empowered and healthy Oakview community. Um, our mission is to narrow those gaps that I described earlier that exist between Oakview and the rest of Huntington Beach. But you can't do that in a silo. A lot of our traditional nonprofit organizations do a fantastic job of addressing one or two of these five areas. But we all know that a a, 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 you can't have a healthy community if it's unsafe, right? You can't have an educated uh, uh, contingency of, of, of youth if the streets are unsafe or if their health care is not being taken care of. So what Oakview Renewal Partnership is, it's a systemic approach um, or a holistic approach to the systemic issues that exists in communities. It's a proof of concept model and we're really focused on this one square mile because in that one square mile we're able to track data and we can track change so that if this proof of concept proves out, then we can use this, these, these, these strategies, these lessons in other isolated communities. This is a very busy uh, slide and as you can see, I'm, I'm not an academic like uh, Dr. here, so it's, it, it, it's kind of uh, all over the place. But let's start with the top left. That's the core of what we do, the Oak View community, the 10,000 residents. In this one square mile, we have a variety of different service providing stakeholders, including CSP, which helps with gang prevention, Oakview Elementary School, the preschool, the Family Resource Center, the, the, the daycare center, um, El Viento program. We have a lot of rich s services and existing assets that are already in the community. And so Oakview Renewal Partnership partners with these existing stakeholders and helps them lower those barriers and look outside of their safe, their um, health outcomes and or just their, their safety outcomes or their education outcomes. It helps them look to the side and understand that there's a systemic issue and we got to collectively address these, diff these five different areas. So um, public safety, education, health, jobs, and housing, these folks do all the hard work. We are the backbone that help to coordinate, but those folks do all, all the hard work. Once we've identified that there's a gap, then we leverage our partnerships with folks outside of the community, funders and service providers to address those needs. And I'll get into some of that a little later, although I only have five minutes here. Um, quickly going through this, this is, these are the five conditions for collective impact. Common agenda, shared measurement, mutually reinforcing activities, continuous communication, backbone support. In one way or another, in the last two minutes, I've described how Oak v. Renewal Partnership does something in each of those five areas. Collective impact. As I described in that quote, it's a systemic issue. So health affects safety and security, affects education, affects housing. It's all um, clumped together. And so you have to bring strategic partners together to address the systemic issues. That's that in a nutshell. Community Wellness Index. This is accountability. This is the bottom line if you're from the, from the um, private sector. There's a lot of investments that go into this community and we want to keep 
our partners and our residents accountable for these investments. So we developed what's called the Community Wellness Index. It's based on the Rockefeller Institute's um, study on urban hardship where you look at these five different areas. Uh, so in public safety, education, health, housing, and jobs, we have different indicators. Um, so these are our needles. In 2007, we took a snapshot. Uh, based on the 2010 uh, data, we're taking another snapshot. We're identifying which needles are, move, are, are being moved and which aren't. But you know what? These aren't all the needles that we need to, to target. So we're, we're, we're right now in the process of revising the index to identify indicators that are important to those folks that belong to those organizations and the indicators that are important to the residents. Okay, um, the key to all of this peace is people that take responsibility, people that take on a leadership role, folks like you in the room and those that presented. And so the gentleman in the middle there, he's the visionary of, of our organization called, Jack, his name is Jack Shaw. Jack Shaw spent 50 years in the management consulting business and was extremely successful. He came to Oakview and started the El Viento Foundation and Healthy Smiles for Kids of, uh, of Orange County, a dental and a youth enrichment program. What he found in those 15 years is that these programs are amazing. Kids are improving. Certain, you know, certain aspects of the community were improving, but the community as a whole wasn't improving, um, at least as much as you would think given all the, the resources. So Jack began to conceptualize a business corp or corporate f framework where the Oakview residents are your customers and your, your, your service providers and partners are your distributors and that you have a bottom line accountability, which was the Community Wellness Index. And so I put him at the, in at the center, but he'll, I'm glad he's not here today because he'd get pissed off. He would say that the leadership, leadership comes from those that we're serving. So you can see these are different images of the residents taking on that leadership role. The residents, like I did, in, like it was in the Dominican Re Republic, they were the one, they were the impetus behind identifying a solution. They were the ones that are part of the process to address that solution. Um, and we, Oakview Reno Partnership and our partners, and our partners kind of cultivate or foster an environment where they can excel. So again, they can change, help change their own conditions. And by being the leaders and being part of that process, then a lot of the programs and initiatives that we start are more likely to succeed. And um, I'm going to end here with, with a minute left, but these, these, this is, these next six slides, which I'll go through really quickly, are examples of how the community has gotten behind an idea, and we have helped to facilitate the, the, the strategic partnerships to make these ideas a reality. So we have the community cleanup, which we do every last Saturday of the month, and we have almost 100 local residents taking to the streets and taking responsibility and pride in their neighborhood. Um, Rainbow Disposal, the city of Huntington Beach, a variety of different uh, CBOs are all part of this. And so we have multiple stakeholders. And it's been going on uh, for the last uh, several years. The Oakview Youth Soccer League, a dad, identified that there was a lack of after-school programming in our community. He took a league that was started with three teams, and now they have almost 40 teams, over 700 youth, all run by volunteers. 40 dads from the community are coaches, and they help run this run this joint, I'm sorry, run this place. Um, you have the city of Huntington Beach, Oakview Elementary School, Boys and Girls Clubs of Huntington Valley, and Rainbow Disposal, all different sectored partners coming together for the, for the same cause, for the same outcome, community wellness. Jobs Initiative, Goodwill of Orange County started a microenterprise program in our community where we're trying to harness the entrepreneurial spirit within our community so that they can create their own jobs. They can, they can, they can take their informal business and become a business owner. Mobile Health Clinic, Healthy Smiles for Kids of Orange County, the Rescue Missions Hurt Family Clinic, Hogue Hospital, Community, coming together, we now have for over 400 patients were served last year. Every month on the, on the third Saturday of the month, we have this mobile clinic at Ocean View High School, so it's a partnership with Ocean View High School, and um, our, our, our residents are served. Shadi, who was here earlier, she helped, she partnered with us to do a community uh, roots garden project where we identify property owners who are interested in working with us so that Shadi and our group could engage the residents to determine whether or not this is something they want. In this case, 
the residents wanted this, they built it, and it's still there today, and they're reaping from its benefits. Um, childhood obesity down 38%. Uh, and finally, this is the H.B. Mercado Certified Farmers Market, a social enterprise that we facilitated uh, almost 10 months ago. Um, we wanted to create better access to fresh foods, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables to our community. Uh, so the community came up with this idea through focus groups to have an open-air market. They helped us put together a business plan. We sold that business plan or, or shared that business plan to Kaiser, Aetna, Pacific Life, and those folks came and helped put the seed money in uh, to start this market. It's a partnership with Ocean View High School uh, and their student and family population so that a portion of the proceeds go back to Ocean View High School. Again, ground up, collective impact. But um, I appreciate your time, um, and I, th I think we're going to do questions. But one last thing, uh, the, the one person theme one person being able to do it. When I was in your situation almost a decade ago, I went down the corporate world because that's what I was supposed to do. Um, but it was never me. It wasn't something that I found, I, I found peace, peace in. Um, it wasn't until five years after that that I had a leap of faith, joined the Peace Corps, and now I'm at peace with what I'm doing. And so my message to you is to to have that leap of faith and, and do what you're, what you're passionate about. And if you haven't quite, quite found your passion, do something that you enjoy and pursue that passionately. Um, so with that, I thank you for your time.